You're buttoned up and prude, not an ounce of you is crude, and your tendencies in bed leave women snoring. But if you look deep down inside and put aside your foolish pride, there are fantasies and holes that need exploring. Close your eyes and picture Francine as a French maid, instead of wearing that same dress that's sort of pink. Sure, you'd rather be on top and give three quick and stop. But I know deep down inside you've got a kink. You've got a kink. You've got a kink. Don't be afraid to put a finger in the stink. Though I know you might be shy, let me show you things to try. Cause like everyone you know, you've got a kink. Imagine yourself living without limits. You've got whips and chains. Who needs a shrink? Cause if you watch me with the ladies, what we do won't cause no babies. Take a tip from me and go and find your kink. You got a kink. He's got a kink. You got a kink. He's got a kink. There's so much here to see. Try not to blink. So if you dig out women's feet, don't be afraid. Turn up that heat. Just like everybody else, you've got a kink. Are you getting it yet? I think I am. I love sleeping with Francine, and I'm used to my routine. But you think it may be time to make a change. So I'll try out something new, like when Carradine turned blue. Who am I to think my wife is sick and strange? I've got a kink. I've got a kink. I've got a kink. I've got a kink. Remember what I said about the stink. So if you like us all, or five or eight, you won't be judged, we're not a jury. Cause way down deep inside, we've all got kinks. We've got a kink, we've got a kink, we've got a kink. Yes, way down deep inside, I've got a kink. Even better, say hello to your new daughter. What? Isn't she beautiful? Is that a Chinese baby? Haley's working at a booby bar? And she traded shifts with Tina? What does Tina have to do that's so important? Oh, wait, this isn't about Tina. <gasps> this isn't about Tina! It's never been about Tina. Oh my God, he's been shot! Haley, tell Roger he's annoying. Cops already? What are we, next door to a freaking Krispy Kreme? You're thinking about donuts now? No, I'm just saying the cops got here fast. What the hell do fast cops have to do with a Krispy Kreme? Because cops love donuts! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> What's happening? Second <laughs> time in my life I was saved by hip hop. But that's another story. Oh, Honey, wake up. We're at the ice rink. My casserole? No, honey, we're skating together in a contest. But it's just for fun, so I can show you I love you. Bastard! <laughs> Come on, honey, I just wanted to show you that you're more important to me than winning. Wait, so he's skating with Roger? No, he's skating with Francine. When did that happen? When you went to the bathroom. You didn't stop telling the story when I was in the bathroom? I told you not to go. And I told you to light a match. How does a boy this small make a smell that large? I'm sorry for abandoning you, Francine. And I don't just mean this competition. I mean for all those winters I left you alone. All I want is to be with you, Stan. That's all I want, too. I don't care if I'm a loser every day for the rest of my life. Just as long as I get to lose with you. Come on, let's go home. Don't you want to see our scores? Who cares? I already won. Be great. Great? Jeff, your dad is a humongous jerk. No, he's just kidding around. He loves me. That's why he can never know what happened in Florida. Look, Jeff, no one wants to admit their dad is a bad guy, but... Bad guy? Look who's talking. You're the one who tricked me and pretended to be my friend. My dad would never do anything. on your that. testicles. It's Braff Zecklin. I was an international race car driver. One day, a baby carriage rolled out onto the track, so I swerved into the retaining wall to avoid it. The car burst into flames, but the baby miraculously survived. I was that baby. That doesn't make any sense. I'm Braff Zacklin! Ah, uh, that wasn't campy at all. He even made me buy him a Yorkie and then take it back when it wouldn't dance for him. So there is no Amanda? There is, but she's fat. Oh, don't go! I'll do anything! 
Are you sure you're really ready? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm ready to quit drinking. Oh, thank God. Terrible. You've got no rhythm, no coordination. I've, I've seen two epileptics share a bowl of noodles with more grace. If your goal was to inspire a feeling of despair, the likes of which hasn't been felt since Whoopi hosted the Oscars, then bravo! Okay, I think that's enough, Roger. Honey, no, it's good for the both of them. I can envision millions of Americans rising up as one and demanding legislation that would require your legs to be amputated, burned, and buried next to Hitler. In short, you suck! Oh, yeah, that's the stuff! Oh, don't put that mask on me! I'm not ready to die! Not before Shatner! I'm doing what has to be done. Reverse the gas. Son of a bitch, Superman tuned me. I told you to listen to me. He did. He totally did. P.S. Francine called Lady Peck and Paw is Dan, dead. Come back here! Dan! Get back here! What's yeah. going on? I let the prisoners out. You what? Yeah, Francine was right. A shark's not very intimidating behind glass, but if you're in the ocean with it... But Roger, they're going to kill us all! And chop off my head! Scary, right? So I pretended uh, to drive off in hysterics and faked my accident. Then, it was just a matter of blackmailing Dr. Weitzman into actually reconstructing my face. And recruiting Jeff to play the part of poor, comatose Haley. Now I'll have a front row seat to watch my dad suffer. Racked with guilt as I describe to him every day just how much pain his darling daughter is in. But you're definitely not bored. Oh, screwed me again. Is this tape recorder? $17.99. That's great. I'm definitely going to buy one. Could you check in the back and see if you have it in red? Sir, you can't put that in your pocket. Yeah! <gasps> What, what, what's, what's going on? Roger, we have to talk. This family has a problem. Oh, finally, we can get this all out in the open. I'll start. Klaus, you're useless and everyone hates you. <gasps> no, Roger, this is about you. The last two months, your selfish behavior has gotten out of control. Stan, tell him. Well, for starters, you constantly raid the fridge and drink all my five alive. You take our clothes without asking and then disappear all day so you can run around as one of your ridiculous personas. I regret my dance card is filled for the evening, but there's always the spring cotillion. I'll tell you what I think. I think you hide behind all these disguises so you don't have to face the fact that the real you is an inconsiderate jerk. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you treat people when you could blame it on Professor Edelstein or AT&T operator Sholanda Dykes. Speaking of which, that credit for my friends and family plan still hasn't shown up on my bill. That credit was generated after your last statement. It'll show up on your next bill. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for choosing AT&T. Enough! You have been treating us like doormats for months, and we're sick and tired of it. Wow, I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. And I guess all I can say is, Eat my dust! He's getting away! Stop him! Ainge? Well, I guess I'll just go put these things in my house. My God, I took a hit out on myself. And I probably charged it to me. Still, Miles. Oh, oh, oh. I was gone 60 years. How long was it here? What? Where did you go? I don't know. But wherever it was, I am their king now.